experience has been amazing. You, you see all these people, uh, there's such a huge energy around that it's, uh, it's nice to share time with them and uh, just explain our experience and, and see how those people are so passionate about what they're doing and, uh, and they really respect what you're saying and they, they're really willing to understand uh, how they can improve and how they can put their business, uh, you know, just to work and, and moving. So it's been amazing. It's my second time now doing this time of grind uh, fireside chat and, and, uh, and uh, I'm going to miss it. You know, I need to do another one next week. So yeah, so it's been amazing. Thank you very much. Hands up. Gracias. Wow. Qué oscuro. It's actually very dark. Wow. Thank you, Carlos. Welcome to Start Grind Barcelona. And to you, yeah. How just, many? Just in a few minutes, I've, I've, I've just thinking to change so many things. You know, HR, revenue. There's so many things. I'm going to bring my people here to find people to work. So it's it's that's, great. Yeah, that's awesome. Thank you. Um, also, I wanted to ask you, how many times have you been welcome on stage as a rock star? Uh, I think it's my first time. I, well, actually, I'm getting quite quite uh, used to uh, oh my God. startup grind because you know, yeah, uh, it's my. Uh, I've been. I think it's, I've been the the, the uh, speaker that's been more the, at least this month. Yeah, I was last week in Madrid. Uh, with the Madrid chapter team, and uh, and today I'm here. So uh, yeah, but it's yeah. it's nice to see all those people around. I'm feeling a bit like the banker, you know, with, <laughs> with the suit, and you know, um, yeah. So it's, I'm with uh, my summer attire. Hope yeah, you don't next mind. time I'm gonna come like you. Yeah, okay, it's good. Yeah. <laughs> good. Uh, first of all, can we change the background to place the the background that we usually have? Thank you. Okay. So before we start, um. Do you have any impression on the pitches? How much did you like them? Did you find anything interesting? Well, uh, um, since uh, we st I started knowing Start and Grind, I actually I didn't know about nothing about Start and Grind a few months ago. That's coming more from the US, then later we can talk about. Um, I love the energy. You know, the energy I find in, in your events and the people, uh, it's absolutely amazing. And, and, and later maybe we can talk a bit about the partnership and the why we have the partnership, but the energy you find in this type of events is absolutely amazing. You know, we, we're really used to have those, um, I will not say boring events, you know, where we, we, everyone knows, knows what is going to happen, what okay. they're going to tell. Everyone's at home preparing what, what they need to, to say or need, they need to do. Actually, I don't know what he's going to ask me, you know, so it's going to no, I'm taking a big risk, but that's fine. I hope you, you, I hope you will help me because I don't know either. First of all, I'm going to introduce you, okay? Yeah. So Carlos is the VP at uh, AC Hotels, which is a brand of hotels that basically very well known because formerly they had been the founders of NH, Hoteles yeah. NH. They sold the company some years ago, I believe it was 2011, I think it was. Well, no, NH we sold in 1997. Oh, sorry, yeah. that, that, that's it, sorry about that. And then with, with that money and those resources, that experience, they created AC Hotel. Recently they have done a joint venture with Marriott International yeah, to absolutely. expand the brand internationally. And this is something that we're gonna be talking about. So he's also part of the of the Chamber of Commerce within, I think, Spain, California, and the, Spain, also the, the, US, yeah. the tourism board in Madrid, yeah. and many other things he's going to be explaining about. And he was the speaker at Startup Brand Madrid's uh, second anniversary party that we, they did last week yeah. with 200 people. So Madrid has beaten us here, 2000, uh, 200 people against 70, which is okay, it's okay, it's a party. But we can solve that in the future, don't worry. Uh, we'll, we're gonna solve that in the yeah, future. Yeah. So thank you very much. We're gonna start about talking a little bit about your background. So maybe if you explain us, what did you study and how did you come into this? Because you come from, because of your family uh, in the hostel Well, industry. maybe I'm a bit uh, strange speaker, you know. I, I've seen the speakers coming usually to start a grind and they're more, you know, people starting their the own companies and all those things. It's true. I, I was born in an entrepreneurial family, you know, so I was born in a hotel, so that's, mm. that's my life. Uh, so I grew up in a hotel, I was actually living in the hotel. Uh, then I studied uh, economics, you know. I, I always thought that maybe it could be working in the, in the industry, but mm -hmm. that's a thing that you, you, you better don't think about before. So I studied economics, then uh, when I finished, uh, I started working, actually it's something similar. Maybe the, it's, a, it's a better, I started in 3i uh, venture capital, you know, so I started with 3i with the British company. Um, and, and then I started running uh, in family business, but everything non-related with hotels. Okay, so we, we have several, uh, you know, business around and, and, and I was managing those things that they were not ready into hotels and then always, always involved in, in, in hotels. I mean, always since the foundation of, of an age, just if you want to give a bit of the background of 
who we are. It's not just me. My father founded in, in 1978 in HLs. Maybe you know there's several of them around Spain. Um, and we sold the company in 1997, and you know, with a quite uh, quite a nice check <laughs> instead of. Uh, just going and play golf and you know having some nice time he decided to start uh, another one you know okay. so um, actually when, when we talk about uh, when I was uh, first invited to the startup grand fight chat say okay what's the relation between startups and, and, and my career or our company and actually the first hotel uh, my father opened that was in Pamplona in 70 I was saying it was quite a startup I mean he he was working for the family business he decided that he wanted to have his own business. The family business was not hotels. Mm -hmm. So he found the place with my mother together. He didn't have investors. I think you will always find those things. I have the idea, I don't have the money, so I need to find, or I don't have all the money, I need to find people around. So he find friends, family, and maybe some fools, <laughs> you know, that's, as we say. And uh, he was able to start his hotel. And then he needed people working. As all of you in your companies, you, you start your new company, you, you need the best team in your company, but sometimes you don't have the money to pay them. So they have a you know, formal work that they cannot leave. So all the employees, or nearly all of them, that started working in the first hotel were shareholders of the company. You oh. know, so, and maybe you think about, you know, it's a, always startup is related with technology companies or not. It was a hotel. And those people, when we sold the company in 1998, I'm talking about the Cook, uh, Frontex people, they made a big check, you know, so, they work. Uh, actually, I remember the, 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 the cook from the chef from, from the hotel. He works in, in the hotel he, since he retired, and he had a quite understanding. And then hmm. we started a second startup. That's a different, bit different when that was in 1998 with AC, the project we're going to talk more maybe around today, and it's a different startup. No money issues, you know. I mean, you have money to, to start the project, but then you need to start. You you had a original company, and you need to start, you know, with a wash sheet and, and, and think, okay, what am I going to do? I've I've got the money, but I cannot do exactly the same things I was doing before. So it's just another way of starting. And then maybe we can talk later about the journey of of. Uh, you know, moving a local company. Let's say we had events internationally exactly. and and get into a big, maybe not monster, but a big company like, like Marriott International and how we, we've run through the last five years. Yeah. Actually, I wanted to ask you, because we were commenting before that, he was in, telling me about the, the history about NHL, and um, basically he said, we sold the company, but then the company kept operating and it became our biggest competitor now. So how is that even possible? Well, I think that that's a mistake done by an age, you know. Uh, yeah. um, and maybe there's some some things to, to, to have there. So now you're uh, once you, you yeah. once you create a company like in Asia, it was quite yeah. a well-known company in, in in Spain in 1998, and your founder, and it's uh, uh, really well. It's my father too, you know. But yeah, he's a quite well-known um, hotelier in the company. Mm -hmm. He didn't sign any competitive restriction, you know. So. And, uh, and, and I think that was the mistake from, from an age in that time. And, uh, and maybe I think they didn't think about, okay, this guy's gonna start again. Mm. You know, he, he, he's living, he has the money. Uh, who thought he would start a new company and you know, we, we constructed in that time mm, from scratch. From scratch, I mean from scratch with some money. 100 hotels, you know, so yeah, but now in Spain is our first competitor, not worldwide because it's changed a bit now the, 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 the global strategy of the company, of course, mm -hmm. but in Spain, uh, NH and in Italy is our first competitor, yeah. And how do you compete against them? Well, it's uh, actually the, one of the things uh, that we, we, we always talk about is when, when we left NH, mm -hmm. we never thought again about it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's okay, it's done. We left the company. We have a new project. Let's go in there. They're going to be they're going to be our competitors. But we uh, actually in in age we we had a lot of learnings. You know, we we there were a lot of mistakes around. There were a lot of good things that you need to learn. Then you continue doing a lot of mistakes all the time. Yeah, that's that's the thing that you cannot. For more experience you get and, and more people you know around, mistakes are going to always going to come there. But you know, that's the challenge and that's why we're in this world that we want to, you know, have our own business. Good. Now that you have explained a little bit the history of NH Hotels, um, what, what did you do with that money? So you mentioned that you had other startups and projects. Yeah. Where did you put your money into? Well, in, initially it was uh, a lot of people paying poker now. No? It was an all-in. 
Right. It was, you know, it was a bit crazy. Okay, we have the money, uh, and we nearly put all the money into the company because we. Right. Um, and now it's a bit different, but when we started AC, we have the management company and we are owners of the hotels. You know, so we were we were able to buy a lot of hotels. So basically, it was everything in the company. Then uh, we have some. Uh, basically, yeah, coming from the partners we have, we had a model when we started with the AC. Uh, what we use is that we always had a local partner. You know, mm -hmm. so we, when you get into Leon, maybe you don't know about too much about Leon. So if you, you're able to get a local partner that knows the area, yeah, there's a lot of legal things to do around. Uh, so we have a lot of local partners that, uh, you know, they were selling, basically they were coming from the real estate business and they were selling, you know, they always come and say, I, I want to sell, you know, I have a slot there that you can construct a hotel and say, okay, instead of selling that you finish, why don't you, uh, Let's create a joint venture between both companies, 50%. You put, you know, your land, where you have there, not of, on the market price, with a quite a nice discount. I'm gonna put the same amount of money. We could start the hotel, and instead of selling and that's finished, okay, you're living something now, but you can have a, the hotel business in the future. So that's the way we start growing. And some of those partners they had different uh, you know, companies and investment, and we start investing with them. So it was like a two ways. You know, mm -hmm. you're partnered with me in the hotels. I'm partnered with you. You know, yeah, there was wineries, of course, some real estate. That that time, you know, it was crazy around real estate. <laughs> um, so we we went into into different areas, just trying to do. But basically, 90% of what we were doing was was based in hotels. That's what we like. It's different too move into another place. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm going to be very, uh, I just want to cover very, very basically here. I'm pretty sure 95% of you guys want to build an hotel after this interview. So I'm going to ask you, what's the very basics? What should we know if we wanted to start an hotel? Well, um, there are businesses that may, maybe they are, you don't need a lot of cash in, in hotels. Like in Monopoly. Uh, you, you need some money, you know, yeah. if you want to be the owner of hotels. Yeah. So um, what we've seen, if you like the hotel business, you don't need to own a hotel as the, as the beginning. Okay. You can be, yeah, we have people working in revenue, uh, the, the later, of course, I'm going to talk with them. Uh, mm -hmm. But the hotel is like a big house. Uh, you know, we have from uh, cooks to engineers to people from technology, marketing, human resource, there's everything in a hotel. So you can start getting into the hotel business, and maybe later you, you, you found investors that can, you don't need to own them. You can have a management company and not just managing full hotels. You can be in different areas. You can have revenue. You have uh, some companies working for the other industry, uh, you know, in the kitchen, in marketing. Now technology is getting huge in the hotel business. Distribution has changed in the last 10 years, but I say I would say in the last five years, it's, it's been the biggest change, how we're distributing our hotels and how information is flowing around. And, uh, and, and, and it's, it's a nice time to be in the, in the market. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's good. Now for the serious question is, some people here, not probably not 95%, but they want to partner with hotels. They want to start working. They need the clients and the hotels are the clients. What's your advice for them on how to approach them and start working with them? To approach to who? To hotels, like the decision makers in the hotels? Well, uh, in, in hotels there's always a big decision maker, it's the GM, you know, so we have yeah. uh, the, 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 the whole company is managed by people, we're still by managed people, and, uh, and uh, GMs are, are the first uh, people to see and try to get in. Uh, then when you get into bigger comp corporations, uh, I wouldn't say that the huge one like Marriott, but maybe a smaller one like AC, or sometimes you find a smaller <laughs> companies that they have six, seven, eight hotels, sometimes they create their own headquarters and then you need, depending where you want to go and what you want to do, you need to arrive to those people. But um, GMs are always the, the person to see. They have the, the, the global strategy. They know exactly what's going on. They're, they're involved in everything from the client uh, experience uh, to pure finance or, or management or whatever in the hotel. So GMs will be the first time to see, the first people to, to, to get in. And sometimes if you get into one of those corporations, those people can help you to get in, you know, some of the leadership coming from, from headquarters or whatever. That's, that's pretty good. I, I take it that GM stands for general manager, something like that? Yeah, yeah, GM, and sorry. Yeah, so, yeah, sorry. General so, managers. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Where do you find these people? Do they go to events, conventions? Do you actually just cold email or cold call them? Well, um, 
hotel business seems to, it looks like it's quite you know you know uh, I I always remember we have a, a kid or your son is not a really good student they would say no he's going to study this tourism you know it's like it's going to be the easy one he's going to do mm -hmm. and um, and when people start working in the industry I was saying it's quite a vocation place you need to love the business because it's a uh, it's uh, if you're a GM general manager you're going to be there seven days a week and uh, and things happen all the time so there's an event to Tonight, there's an issue with the client tomorrow, but basically what we are saying, where do we find those people? Of course, there's a lot of uh, universities around. They're getting better, so we were talking about how we can train people, and, and I think the industry is missing more real training that we have people that are really prepared. They, they thought that was quite a simple thing, but basically all the GMs, all the generalizers we had, 80% of the GMs we have uh, in AC start working with us in different positions. They start from the base. So maybe some of them, there's the first job, you know, I'm just finished my career or my university, I want a job, maybe I, I get into just a the front desk, or maybe something. Sometimes they just, you know, they, they, they get them in the summer. Or that, and when we get the passion of those people, and they they start discovering what's a little business, because there's so many things in there, then they start growing in. Yeah, so. So they live actually in the hotel. That means that if they say I'm not in the office, they are actually lying, right? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they, there need to be, and now all you know, all the technology, Blackberries and uh, iPhones and uh, Blackberry, they don't exist anymore. But I mean, that was the first one. But there's one guy I mean, here with a Blackberry. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> sure. this one sure, guy. Yeah. So they're, they're, now they need to be 100% connected. So that's in hotel is quite risky. When we gave to yeah. the to the GMs the first mobile, it was like, hey, are you sure you want one? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that means 24 It needs to hours. be connected 24 hours, you know, exactly. because anything could happen at any time, you know, so there's a lot of things happening in our town. You mentioned something very important that actually, you know, we start brand, we belong to this entrepreneurial scene and we have a lot to do with technology. You mentioned yeah. that technology is changing a lot in hotels. In which ways? Well, basically the, the, the biggest change has been in distribution. How uh, clients are buying hotels. Okay. Uh, so that's been the big change. Uh, before it was quite a it's a simple way of doing things when, when technology wasn't available. I mean, we have the agencies, bigger or, low, or smaller ones, more local agencies. So if you knew the agency, I don't know, people working in your area, they, they were able to convince you where to go. Um, people were never, not able to get into uh, you know, an iPhone or whatever and, and check things. So basically distribution has been the, the big thing that changed in the beginning. And, uh, and now all, all that distribution and technology has taken us to all the information. So you can get tons of information in one second. Actually, you, could, you can get your iPhone or whatever display you have, and you can make a reservation in AC uh, in 60 seconds. I could do a reservation now in 60 seconds. You know, so before you were calling to the agency, everyone was so slow, revenue we were talking. Revenue was quite easy before. I mean easy. Maybe not easy, it was different. Um, now you cannot die. We have, maybe we have too much information that some people, uh, we don't know how to manage it because it's like the big data coming, okay, we have all this, okay, but what are we gonna do? But, uh, you know, all, all technology, uh, all the mobile things around, all that clear information arriving every day to our, to, 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 to our displays has changed everything in the market. What are the latest technological changes you have incorporated in AC, for instance? Some, couple of examples. Well, uh, revenue uh, that we were talking has been uh, one of the things we, we started a long time ago and, uh, and, and, uh, and I think um, when we get and we compare to smaller hotels and individual hotels, we have now really good tools that tools are tools, it doesn't mean that they're going to tell you exactly what you need to do, but they'll help you. So revenue has been a big change, all the revenue structure we're working on. Uh, and in the last five years, mobile has been the, you know, we, we're working now with everything around mobile. So we've introduced mobile check-in, uh, we've now, t we're now testing in the US, we have, actually the first hotel in Spain is going to be one of our hotels. Uh, we we introduced in the, the mobile key, so you're going to be able to get into the hotel, not just making the, the check-in, you can get into your room with your mobile. So, so all, all, everything related around mobile displays, it's what it's what uh, it's what now is working. Uh, five years ago, just to give you some data about mobile, I'm talking about Merit International globally. Mm -hmm. uh, we actually didn't sell too much rooms around mobile. Now, 2015, 
we sold more, uh, more than a billion dollars. I mean, 1,000 million year, uh, dollars. Through the mobile? Through the mobile. Yeah. People buying rooms through an, an iPhone or, or whatever. One billion. <laughs> now, so imagine how it's growing. Now that you're mentioning mobile, I know people are dying for this question, but what kind of Pokemon can we get in your hotels? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not, I'm, I, I've, I'm not really used about Pokemon, so I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell I, you how I'm that works, for, because probably I'm going to give you an idea. Okay. But I'm not an expert at that, so that's the one you're catching Pokemon around, no? Exactly. Yeah. So people basically... I, I have the app, eh? but I'm not... I'm not He's got the app. Okay. <laughs> you, can, you can try it. You can play on stage if you want. If this okay. gets boring, you can play. So basically people I know go it's around... risky, you know, the people that yeah, the cars are exactly. going through, or people are just going around. If this gets boring, they're just going to start over. So <laughs> basically you go around catching Pokemon. But the thing is they, they've got a revenue model whereby if you've got a shop, you can actually sign up. So they put one stop there, and people would go to that place and just check in and do some stuff. Okay. So it, they drive people to your oh, business. Great. And this is something that. that you would investigate? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. We, we've now, um, you know, in the, in the last year, we've been analyzing a lot what the client is looking for. And, and we've launched now what we call the AC launch. So right. that, and that's the place. And actually, when we talk about the, the partnership with Star Trek, that, that's so. going to be yeah. the place, you know. So uh, uh, we've started really uh, deeply what the client are looking for. And the AC launch is, is the, the area where you have breakfast food, uh, you can have, you know, uh, talk with people, connect, whatever. So I, I like the idea for the performance. People need to get into the AC launch and then, and then yeah, yeah, that, that's going to be a good one. You can do some revenue share. Absolutely, okay. absolutely. Okay yeah, yeah, absolutely. So not asking for much. Let's go into the, the, this interesting topic. Actually, I wanted you to explain a little bit this big partnership we have done with yeah. start between Star Brand and AC Hotels by Marriott. Yeah. Maybe it happened at the beginning of the year, so maybe you can give some insight of what you guys are planning yeah. and what are you looking for in the community. How can we help you? Yeah, uh, maybe before that, I can explain a bit where it's been the journey and, and why exactly. we're here with uh, with Startup Brand. No, uh, uh, we were talking about when we we founded a, a AC 1998, but just to explain the people in in 20 end of. 2010, uh, we signed a joint venture with Merit International. So exactly. it, uh, and we went live with Merit in, in 2011. Just to give you some numbers, Merit International now uh, is going to be for sure the first company in the world, but just Merit, more than 4,000 hotels in the world, um, company based in, in Washington, in Bethesda, funded by Mr. Marriott, uh, who's still there, uh, with brands like Rich Carlton, Renaissance, Red Marriott, that maybe you know, Courtiers, etc. So that time um, in 2011, Mario was looking for a brand uh, to grow around Europe and Latin America with a more European style. Mm -hmm. uh, so we had a meeting with them. It was a like it, it was quite nice how we had the first meeting because we were not looking to each other. You know, it was just a meeting. Okay, we looking. We want to do that. How can we do it? And we could start the joint venture. So from May 2011, uh, AC is now one of the 19 brands that Merit has in, in the portfolio and, and, and on the journey in the last five years has been amazing. You know, converting a, we had nearly 100 hotels at that time, more based in, in Spain and in Italy uh, and, and go through the journey to, to an international company and integrate into a big monster you know, where, where things are a bit different. Just the language is a bit different now. Now we're talking in English, but then you get into the company, you see that a lot of people don't speak English. So it's, it's a big challenging. Systems are different, everything's different. So now I think we get in there and, and converting the, the, the company, local company, into a global company. You know? and, and I think that's been attaching that to Startup Grind. That's exactly what we've done. When we start, we were co managing the, the, the company, so headquarters of AC. It's the, the only headquarters from a brand out from Bethesda in, in, in Washington uh, from one of the brands in Merit in it's AC, but it's based in Madrid. Mm -hmm. And that's what what they wanted to do the same. They wanted that way, you know, that we manage the brand from there. So uh, everything is managed there. When we started with the global team that it's in, in, in the US, managing more brands that weaker brand, say okay, what are the partnerships we need to find? And uh, we were looking for something global. And, uh, and uh, Startup Green Grind has been amazing. One of the key things I found when we started and, and started knowing all of you, is that usually the bigger companies, when we have partnerships, it's always a transaction. It's a transaction partnership. So it's more, what are you gonna give me, give me if I give you X amount of money or X amount of money? In this case, it's not a transaction. You know, it's, it's absolutely 
Um, we believe in the community. Actually, I was telling you, the, the energy that's in the community is amazing. Um, we're, there's not an exchange of room nights. So I mean, okay, I'm gonna get in, uh, I give you X amount of money, I'm gonna be able to get all the room nights, I don't know how much amount of room nights in, in the company. Mm -hmm. So that's, cr it's creating now in the company a partnership that is absolutely different to the rest of the, of the partnership we have, or we've done before. And it's absolutely aligned uh, with our work, you know, company, strategy, vision about entrepreneurs, uh, technology. Of course, we have a really modern product. Uh, we say, you know, with Spanish roots, uh, European soul, global mindset, you know, so we get in the global mindset. And Start Grind has, you know, better than me, you all know. Well, maybe, you know, it's, it's a huge community with people all around the world. So that's why I, and it's been amazing the journey since, it was February, I think, when it was February. in San Francisco, where we launched the brand, the, the, the brand, the, the partnership. Um, and now we're starting to do more and more things with, with all of you, so it's gonna be great, yeah. So I think you're looking for the global, you know, aspect of Startup Brand, obviously we're in past 220 cities, more than 88 countries, which yeah. is amazing. And uh, so you're probably looking for the people who are traveling to engage them into going to your hotels, what you're looking to get well, from uh, yeah, the, the romance are going to come later. Yeah. We're not worried. I'm sure here, this, the new Facebooks, Googles, whatever, they're going to be here or in, in other chapters. So we we just thinking that when you have that amazing companies with tons of executive and people work uh, traveling around, just remember they see that we were there at the beginning. So that's the, our first goal. That's yeah, but basically what we want to do is give back a big, give back things, you know, and uh, and uh, we were talking before about the AC launch. Now what we, we, we want uh, the community to do is to use our hotels, not use them uh, from a uh, room nights perspective. We want them to use our installation. So we have the AC launch where, where we're working now and we're gonna give uh, to all the community more information about uh, how they can use the AC launch, how they can use the meeting rooms. You will have always, when you start in, when we have a new business, you always don't have too much money. You know, you need so you need help from any part coming. You know? So, so uh, the AC launch is a space where you can we work and you can get free coffee. Uh, you can meetings. Of course, we're gonna have uh, events, five chats here and around the world. We've done now events here in Madrid. Uh, we've done an event in the AC Chicago, mm -hmm. another one in Miami. So we start to work and we want to give benefits to the startup community, so they start thinking that it's a place where they're part of AC and they can use it for, for the day-to-day -day business. That's why I think that answer requires an applause. What do you think? <laughs> Good. We'll talk more, you're gonna send, you're very, obviously very grateful for this partnership yeah. and um, we're gonna be learning more as time goes by and you guys are gonna be, you know, or you're gonna be told as well what we're gonna do with them. But I wanted to understand this global partnership that you guys did with Marriott International, right? Because this is something that our audience asks a lot, like how to expand internationally. Yeah. Did, they found, did they find you or you found them? Well, actually, uh, the first meeting we had, we, we have a, a good friend that is one of our advisors, he, actually he is one of our board members that had a great relation with Marriott uh, International with some of the people around. Mm -hmm. uh, we had some more conversations in 2006 with them and basically Marriott has changed a lot in the last years. Uh, okay. You know, there's a new CEO, Marriott is the man, but uh, one of the key things he, he knew that it, in, he's now 84, that he, he needed to change some of the things around management. So uh, in 2006 they wanted to buy a company, that's what they were looking for, uh, and they were like, like I'm the big, the big hotel company. I know everything around, so I don't need help in our, uh, around the world. In 2010, we had the, the meeting with them. The advisor said, "You know, they want to have a meeting with you." So we we fly to London. We had two people coming from the U.S. My father, myself, my brother were there, just listening. Okay, what do you want? And that time, they they they, they started seeing that okay, the use is fine, but they were not able to get traction internationally. So they, they needed help. Imagine, mm -hmm. that time there were no 4,000, Rosetta, about 3,000 hotel. A 3,000 hotel company like America to say, we like what you do and we want you to continue doing it because we don't know how to do it. Mm -hmm. um, so it was like a bit crazy, okay. So of course there was some money coming in, so it was good. Um, 
and our goal was basically to, to expand the, the brand globally. It's really difficult for a hotel company to expand internationally. It's really, really difficult because you know you need uh, to know the area. There's a huge invest investment community that is difficult to, they need to understand. They're looking for a big company. So for us, getting part of uh, a company like, uh, like Marriott being global, having all that huge community. And the culture was, was, was really similar, you know. In, in Marriott, we, we always say that put people first. That was our, the thing we always do. So if we take care of our people, our people are going to take care of our customers. That's our first thing we always think in, 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 in the hotel. And we did the same in, in AC. So people in Marriott, there's, there's all the associates. We don't call, call them employees, our associates, you know. The associates from, from Marriott, they're really proud to work for Marriott and proud for work for Mr. Marriott, mm -hmm. and uh, people in, in AC, they're, re they're really proud of working for AC, and really proud of working for Antonio Catalan, no? who's, who's our chairman. So there were so many things that were so similar, and we saw clearly that there was a huge opportunity to get in there and expand the brand, and they want us to continue doing what we were doing, that it was, it was, it was clear, the decision. It was actually, the first meeting we had was in March, and we signed the full deal in December. So, so for year. a full deal with 100 hotels, with a lot of things to do in the future, it was really quick. Two months, yeah. 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 Actually, we don't get very often founders who have sold their companies, right? I think mm -hmm. the last one we had here was, I think it was Iñaki Tenaro in Trovit. Yep. And actually, I, I'm, I'm going to ask you the same question. So how do you react when somebody wants to buy your company? And what's the process? Well, in the first, when 2008, they wanted to buy the company, we said no. And right. we were expanding, we just expanded the company, so we didn't see that. What we did in 2011 is we didn't sell the company. We had a joint venture with them. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's more, okay, we can, if we get the best of Marriott and we get the best of AC, yeah. we can create a company that really works really well. So for us, they, they, they were getting the expertise of uh, how uh, to generate the product, how to generate the AC. You know, for the US people, sometimes it's difficult to understand what's going on in Europe. Yeah. And, and, and maybe for people in Europe, it's difficult to understand what's going on in the US too. So uh, it was a win-win at that time. So it was not, I'm going to sell the company, I'm going to take my company to the next step. And I think that's, that was the next step, yeah. I actually wanted to ask, you mentioned before that you were actually scouting for new areas, right? So some people want to go to, they have a brand here, they have a company, they want to go to another country. What do they have to do in order to check the market there? What do you usually Well, advise? they need to be lucky, that's, that's first, yeah. That's first, yeah. 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 The, the, depending we on the can market, work on that. I don't think that the, all the markets are the same, but uh, from our experience, uh, getting an international partner that has the expertise in every country, so the same thing I was saying from the locals, that sometimes we think we're in Barcelona, Madrid, we know everything, but what's going on in, in Leon, in Sevilla, or in La Coruña is absolutely different, so it's not exactly the same. So it's important to get your partners in those areas that they have the expertise, they can give you the local things, but you need to still give your things, you know? It's, it's not just, I'm just expanding, I'm giving everything, you always need locals to get it international. So that's, that's why, or you can, you can attach uh, with Marriott the way we did, but that's sometimes difficult. You know, of course, I, I, I'm sure a lot of companies say, okay, I would like to be part of Google. Uh, of course, everyone yeah. will be like part of Google. But there's smaller companies around that, that they can help you to expand, um, and they, they know the area, they know the community, they know all the challenges you're gonna find. So it, it's important to get just find, try to find the markets, but don't do it by yourself. I think sometimes it's risky to get into a new country. And uh, the US is quite the same, you know, from east to west, it's quite, you know, they, they do things similar. That's the same from the test. When we were, we were developing the brand, it's tougher to get uh, development through Europe or to Latin America, where imagine if it's, there's a difference between Barcelona and Sevilla, absolutely different. Yeah. Uh, imagine when we talk about Germany and Spain or Italy or there's so many cultural things going around. In the US, mm -hmm. the, the hotel business is quite organized. You know, there are investors, there are managers, there are big brand companies, and uh, let's say the management contract, contract high, 
basically exactly the same from, from east to west, and they're exactly the same if you sign with Marriott, with Hilton, with, uh, with Interconti or whatever company, so yeah. Perfect, before we go into the last part of the conversation where I'm gonna ask some more personal questions, yeah. I would like to ask, you've been in the hotel industry for all your uh, career spanning, right? So I wanna know if you have identified one trend or something that's going on this year that we should know if we want to work in the hotel industry. What we well, should be aware of? Well, if you want to work, uh, I mean, the new technologies are the things that are going to hit hard in the hotels. I mean, how we manage hotels, it's quite organized. And, and there are two things now that, that there are, are, are just moving into, into another stage. It's technology, where we're saying all the distribution. So yeah. anything related to technology, revenue, uh, how we can interact with the client is it's critical. And all the hotels, at least, were moving into more an experience. So all the things related to experience in a hotel, it's going to be critical in the, in the future. I mean, if you think about the hotel industry, in the past, the hoteliers, what we used to do is, let's put everything into a, into a hotel. So a lot of clients are going to come to my property, and I need to give them anything they might need. So you get into a room, you have the desk, you have envelopes, you have uh, paper, you have the TV, uh, you have so many things going around. You, can, you have a restaurant where you have a club sandwich, a citrus salad, a uh, lot of things. Now, what we're doing in the hoteliers is we're starting, we have more data, so we know who's coming or who we, do we want to come to our hotels. So we create the experiences to our target clients. It's not that we, it's not, of course, I, I like all the clients, but we need to make decisions, not for everyone. It's decisions for those clients that we we consulted the company for. And they, they have options. We have options in Merit. I mean, we have 19 brands. You could be a Ritz Carlton client if you have a, lot, a bit of money. But then if you want to go more to the, you know, more selective service hotels, we have AC, will be more the design, you know, with uh, more the curator that we're working around, with a really nice design, architecture going around. Or you have, you have Courier, that is more a performance brand that is for different generations. So, all, everything working around the experience in the hotel is going to be something huge. And the hotels, are, uh, hoteliers at the end, what we say, we're selling are rooms. So uh, if we make, mo make money, we make money selling rooms. It's difficult for us to make money. Uh, breakfast, we make some, some money too. But with the rest of the services, it's not so easy to make money. With the restaurant, you can have, if you have the restaurant that is working in the area, fine. But with a regular hotel restaurant, it's difficult to make money. So all the experience that can, you can give around the client so that client can choose us and they can come back to the hotel, that's going to be a critical thing. So, so think about experience in the hotel and how you can make our lives easier as a hotel manager. That's perfect. Yeah. Um, let's go into this last part. I wanted to ask you, so a lot of people here, or some people, let's say, a respectable amount of people, they want to quit their jobs. And they need like the final push to become an entrepreneur. What's your advice to them? Would you say, go for it, no, go for it? What's the reason? Well, always go for it. Uh, I think getting into your business, it depends on so many things. It depends on the time, so I mean it's not the same where you're 20 something, you're in university and maybe your risk are a bit lower than if you have a, you know, another structure in, in your life. So I, I would say always yes, try it. Try it if you have a, a, a clear vision of what, what you're going to do. Uh, today we were talking, uh, when we were in the hotel, I think, I don't know with you, at least with Christina, my, my, yeah. my, my marketing director, we talked about what are the values that they're the giving to people Basically, in Spain, where you get into university, not all of them, I mean, because there are a lot of different universities in Spain, or what you get in other countries, basically, more in, in, in the US. No? In the US, they're, they're, they're pushing more you to be an entrepreneur and have your own business. And, and the, in, sometimes, in, at least in Spain, it's like, hey, let's see if you can get a good job from the government and you know, just, just get your money every month. So, so that's, uh, that's the thing that. I will, I will always try to get in there, but you need to believe what you're doing. And, and, and maybe people from, uh, we always talk, okay, entrepreneurs are, they, they, they are born or they're, you know, or they're, they're created yeah. to the time. It depends of where you're born, with who are you related, you know. Uh, now I'm here, so 
I'm in the startup grind now, so maybe my kids, when they're older, I'm going to push them to come into a startup grind and they're going to create an entrepreneur. If I was working in another place and with another, I'm going to give different values to my kids. Then, of course, some of them say, no, I want to be an entrepreneur. But of course, always yes. You need to try it. And uh, if it doesn't work, uh, you always can get out. You know, uh, uh, a job, regular job that can That's make right. money. Yeah, That's you need right. to try it. Yeah. Good. How do you organize your day? I want to know very briefly. How do you organize your day? Whether you have some productivity tips for our audience tonight? Well, uh, our tennis is quite a, a crazy uh, business. It's true that that my position is a bit different because I'm not. I'm lucky now that I'm, I'm able to manage several things. You know, so it's quite a multi. When you, when you manage, as I was saying before, it's it's quite you managing some marketing, of course, human resources all the time, uh, your marketing distribution, uh, revenue, a lot of things around. So um, I, I'm quite organized. I, I need to to be uh, try to keep my my team all together. And one of the things we're working all around is that everyone needs to know what's going around with the rest of the department. So my my key thing is that marketing understands something about revenue. So when we talk about those crazy words about ref bar or whatever, you know, revenue pimp around, they need to know what we're talking about. So, so uh, m my my week is quite organized with the teams, and then I I try every 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 two weeks I, I try to visit hotels. So I, I need to go to the field to see what's going on. To today I, we arrived a bit earlier, so we we toured three hotels in in in, in Barcelona. We have conversation with the GMs. So there's a lot of work talking about with the people. And then there's a lot of, every time it's, it's getting more technical. So it's, it's, it's sometimes you're losing a bit that more personal way. We need to do it that way. You're getting so much information now that we get so many data that sometimes it's getting a bit tricky. Uh, new things coming every day. So you need to be really updated about what the new technology is coming and how they need to work. But basically, it's, uh, it's uh, you know, getting that team. I have a really good team, and uh, I love them. And, uh, and they, they, they're really passionate about the business. And, uh, and that helps a lot. Um, when If you think that you always need to be there, uh, when you have a company, that's 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 difficult. So my, my goal is that if I I'm out for a week, everything needs to continue exactly the the same. The, the way it needs to to work. So, you know, no. Perfect. As a highly organized person, and you say this is becoming more and more technical, you're probably l using a lot of apps in your phone. So if there is is there any app you couldn't live without? Well, actually, I, I will I will tell you something. I buy everything through my mobile. Okay. Everything. So I mean. Uh, Air tickets, trains, hotels, Amazon, everything. So I'm, I'm a hard user of my, mo my mobile, everything. So uh, it's quick, it's easier when I use my mobile. So that's why I'm, I, I think in the hotel business, everything is going to move there. Yeah. We, I, I don't see the computer, the computer anymore. You know, it's like actually now I'm using Surface. So it's, it's, it's between one and, and the other. So we can have a device. So I'm, I'm, I'm a hard user of a lot of apps. But basically, every transaction I'm doing, of course, banks, everything, I'm always using my mobile. Even Renfe. Absolutely, Good yeah, luck. Yeah. even Renfe. <laughs> but but it's it's much it's it's you know when I it use Renfe it's it's perfect. I have my boarding pass. I have everything in there, so it's it's easier. Yeah, Good. Yeah. You have a superpower, actually. Yeah, yeah. My last question. I'm got an expert in Renfe. My, yeah. my last question is: everybody has got a useless superpower. Something you do exceptionally well, but it's worth nothing. What is yours? That I do exactly well. Yeah, you you do it every day, but it's like why do I do this? I don't, I don't have too many superpowers, you know. I have, I'm, I'm quite fine in in a lot of them, but maybe I don't have a superpower that doesn't. You know, I I, I can tell you one that I, that doesn't give a superpower. I don't have it any. It needs superpower. to be useless. So, for instance, one of the most popular is I, when I lock the car, I walk away 50 meters, and I don't know whether I have locked it, so I go back again. This is something that you do every day, but it's not very useful. Do you no. do something like this? I'm, I'm, I'm not. I'm trying to do always things that, you know, they're quite not organized, but they're there for something. So I, I, I try to take my time and things. So I, I don't have a thing that I'm. Oh, at least I can remember now. Maybe I have a lot of them. Yeah. Perfect. Last question, very quickly, three or four words. How can we help you tonight? 
Well, I think has been. Uh, I think just being here, here is, is is help for me. You know, I, I think we we uh, not just me. Uh, AC is going to start coming more in, into into this community, and, and and I think I was saying at the beginning. Uh, I, I think I'm, I'm next time next time you have a, my HR director is going to come here. You know, we she's going to be up here. I'm looking for people to work with me. So that's right. I think uh, we. It, it's nice to be here to see how passionate all of you are around your business, uh, how dynamic everything is going. And, and I think it's going to be really helpful for AC. I mean, I'm, I'm talking like more like the corporation, you know, like Marriott. We're trying to do things more uh, related with all of you. And I'm sure we, we're going to find in a few months uh, a lot of the people here working with us or us with, working with them. So the relation between Startup Grind and, uh, and they see, and of course Merit, but they see strongly, it's going to be huge. I'm sure about that. Yeah. That's lovely. Big applause for Carlos. Thank you. Thank you. Good.